I was hurting all alone. I was searching for a comfort I could find on my own with no direction. Feeling down, my life was headed for disaster. Do you turn me around? Nothing ever had been able to ease me when trying to please me. It only the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Rome had some words of encouragement to them as he writes to them and he tries to encourage them. I want you to listen to his encouraging words in the book of Romans chapter number 15 and verse number 13. Paul write these encouraging words. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. There is within all of us who are children of God a power that is magnificent. It is a wonderful power, it is a great power, and yet it is a mysterious power. Every child of God has this power. And sometimes we are not aware of the power that we have, and, and sometimes as brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't know that we have access to this particular power. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. That's my subject today. The power of the Holy Ghost. In the archives of fiction comes a story about a little chicken who was raised among other chickens on the barnyard, and he didn't fit in. He was different from the other chickens, and his nose was different, his beak was different, and he walked different, and yes, he sounded different, and, and yes, his wings were different. Sometimes he would even almost trip over the wide wings that he had. He was just different from the other chickens on the yard. Have you ever felt out of place? Have you ever felt different from those who are around you? And, and it seems to bother you. And this was the case with this young chicken on the barnyard. He was different. But oh, one day, one day, one day, one day, he looked up in the sky and he saw some other birds flying in the sky. And those birds looked just like him. They had a beak just like him. Their wingspan and their wings were just like him. He, he looked at these birds flying in the air, so. Something within him urged him to try to join these birds as he looked up in the sky. Look at him now, looking up in the sky at these birds. And he could not contain himself. And so therefore he began to run in the barnyard. Faster and faster he ran. Look at him now on the barnyard running. And then he began to to flap those wings, those big wide wings, he began to flap them, flippity flop, he runs faster now, and then he took off in the sky. I believe I can fly. He was flying and he joined the other birds in the sky and he suddenly realized that he was an eagle and not a chicken. 
join these eagles and he lived happily ever after living and soaring as an eagle there are some Christians today there are some children of God today don't know that they're eagles they're living like chickens and they are eagles Oh, there is nothing, there is nothing wrong with being a chicken. God made chicken, but why would you live the life of an eagle when you are, or live the life of a chicken when you are an eagle? Why? There is nothing wrong with being a chicken if you are a chicken. If God has, has made you a chicken, then be a chicken. But why be a chicken when you are an eagle? I want to tell every child of God today, you are an eagle. You are not a chicken. You are not a turkey. You are not a dove. No, you are an eagle. Bible says and God said these words oh God said that you are an eagle look the Bible said these words they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength or oh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not think, don't you know, don't you know, children of God, that you are an eagle and you ought to start living like an eagle. Don't you know that you have the strength of an eagle? Don't you know you have the power of an eagle? Don't you know that you need to be soaring as an eagle? Yes, you are. There are untold Christians today who don't know that they have the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost within them. I said there are power, there are individuals, there are children of God, there are members of the body of Christ, and they don't know that they have the power of the Holy Spirit within them. Read about a story in the Bible. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 1, the Bible said that Apollos and and Paul was traveling through the upper coast of Ephesus. And they came across some disciples there. And, and Paul began to ask them, do you have the Holy Spirit? And, and they answered these words, we don't even know what a Holy Spirit is. Oh, they were not familiar with and they did not know uh, the existence of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something today? There are some members of the body of Christ that don't know the Holy Spirit. There are some members of the body of Christ that don't have the Spirit of God in them. There are individuals have access to the Spirit of God, and, and they don't know it. This is the deal, my brothers and sisters. This is the deal. When a man repents of his sins and he obeys the gospel, and then he's obeyed, he goes down in the water, a grave of baptism, and he arrives the Bible says that God gives him the Spirit. God gives him the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The Bible says, Peter said, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent therefore, Peter said, and be baptized in the name of the Lord and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the deal. Something else you may not know. That the Holy Spirit works and operates through the word of God. I want to say it again. You may not understand the, the working of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit works and he operates through the word of God. The Bible said these words. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The spirit uses the word of God. It operates through the word of God. 
That's the way the Spirit works. If you want the power of the Holy Spirit, you must have the power of the Word. If you want to know the Holy Spirit, you need to know the Word of God. They are inseparable. Don't you go listening for the Holy Spirit down in the woods. Somebody help me today. I said, don't you go looking for him and listening for him, the Holy Spirit down in the woods somewhere. And don't you try to listen to the Holy Spirit out of the cloud. But you need, if you want to hear the words of the Holy Spirit and you want the Holy Spirit to talk to you, open the book, open the word of God, because this is the medium. This is the way the Holy Spirit speaks today. All the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you today that the Spirit has revelation power. Oh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has, has revelation power. There are some things, there are some things that the Holy Spirit will reveal to the child of God that it, does not reveal to the world there is something about the Holy Spirit that he will reveal something to the child of God that it doesn't reveal to the world. The Spirit of God has revelation power. Can I read it to you today? In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 9, the Bible said these words, as it is written, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the imagination of the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. God has revealed these things through his spirit, the Bible says. Oh, there were some marvelous things. Uh, that the Holy Spirit reveals. There are some marvelous things God has uncovered. Oh, God has taken the cover off certain mysteries. But the Bible says here that it's the Holy Spirit that reveals these things unto man. Oh, how glorious it is. The Bible said the Holy Spirit reveals them to those who love the Lord. And I got to ask you the question today. I, I, I'm stirred to ask you the question today. Do you love the Lord? Where is your proof? If you love the Lord, where is your proof? Where is your proof? Do you love the Lord? Because the Bible says that God reveals these mysteries through the Holy Spirit to them that love him. I want to ask you again, do you love the Lord? And Jesus said these words, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. The glorious, the glorious things of God. The Holy Spirit has revealed. Oh, so glorious, the Bible says, your eyes have not ever seen. Oh, they're so glorious and they are so wonderful that the ears have never heard something so beautiful. And the Bible says, this text says that it hasn't even ended into your imagination. It is so wonderful, it will blow your mind. What is it, Gray? What is it that's so wonderful that our eyes have never seen? What is it so wonderful that our ears have never heard? What is it so wonderful that our minds cannot comprehend? Oh, it's the glories of heaven. It's so glorious. You've never seen something as beautiful as heaven. You've never heard music as beautiful as the songs of heaven. You have never, you have never even imagined the beauties of heaven. But it's revealed by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. But there is more. Oh, yes, there is more. Would you join me today in admitting there are times when we live in sorrow? Would you join me today in admitting and confessing there are some things in this life that brings grief and sorrow to your life? And 
You, you are in the deep valley of sorrow. You, you cannot live in this world without sometimes dipping down in the valley of sorrow. Are you there? Have you ever been there? Oh, but don't worry. I said, don't worry because we have a comforter. We have somebody, we have somebody that lives within us. That will lift us from the valley of sorrow. That will lift us from the valley of grief. His name is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said to his disciples. I'm going your way now. I'm leaving you boys now. And I'm going to be crucified. And he said but don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you another comforter. I, I'm going to leave with you. I, and I'm going to pray to the father. And he is going to send down the Holy Spirit. And he is going to dwell within you. And he is going to be your comforter. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for lifting us out of the valley of depression and lifting us out of the valley of, of sorrow. Oh, yes. Have you ever been down in the valley? Oh, there is a little device in our world. It's marvelous. It's a marvelous device. It will direct you anywhere on the planet. I don't care where you are. This little device will direct you. And, and if you get lost, it will give you step-by-step -step directions. And if you get lost, it, it will redirect you and recalculate. It's called a GPS. Oh, I'm so glad today. Oh, I'm so glad today that I have a GPS. I have a spiritual GPS. I know that because the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God gives us a GPS while we're traveling through this world. And sometimes we get lost in the world and sometimes we don't know what direction to take. I'm so glad that God has, has given us a spiritual GPS. The steps of an all the steps of a good man, the Bible says, is ordered by the Lord. Don't you know that God will direct your steps? If you are a good man, if you are a godly man, oh God will direct your step. Step by step, He will give you directions. And if you miss a step, and if you get lost, it will redirect you. Thank you, Lord. A spiritual GPS. Oh, yes. I, I want to tell you this. I don't mean to offend you, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence. But you don't have the knowledge to successfully direct your life. Let me say it again. I said, uh, you, you, you don't have, I don't have the intelligence. I don't have the wisdom to direct or successfully direct my life. I know that because of what the Bible says. Come here, Nehemiah. Come here, Jeremiah. Come here, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10, 23, the Bible said these words, O oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man to direct his own steps. I don't care how many degrees you have. I said I don't care how many degrees you have. You can't successfully direct your own life. And I don't care, I don't care, honey, how, how much money you have. You can successfully direct your own life. And I don't care, I don't care how old you are and how much wisdom you have. You can successfully direct your own life. No, you can't. And you may look at yourself as Superman, but even Superman can't direct his steps without the Lord. 
Come ye Holy Spirit. Come ye God and direct my life. That's why, that's why, that's why. I'm going to allow the Lord to direct my life. I'm going to give the stirring wheel of my life to God. Go, oh God, 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 come here. Holy Spirit, come here and direct my life. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, you know all about me. Jesus, you made me and you know more about me than I know about myself. And Jesus, take the wheel, take the wheel of my life and direct and guide my life. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Yes. Yes. But there is something else. Don't you know the Spirit gives us prayer power? I said, I said, the Holy Spirit gives us prayer power. Come here, come here, come here today and listen to what the Bible says. Romans chapter 8, verse number 26, the Bible said these words, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not. Things we ought to pray for. But the Spirit make intercessions for us. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? Don't you know, don't you know that you don't have the power to pray all by yourself? It's the Holy Spirit that comes and helps us pray to God. You don't have the you don't have the knowledge. The Bible says the, the Bible says we don't have the knowledge, the intellect to pray as we ought to. Oh, the Holy Spirit! Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says make intercessions for us. Our prayers sometimes are wrong, or oh, sometimes we ask for the wrong thing. It's the Holy Spirit that intervenes or make intercessions for us. This is the way it works. We are way down here. God is way up there. And yes, we send, we send prayers up to God. But yes, before our prayers reach the Father, the Bible says, this text says that the Holy Spirit intersects our prayers. And then the Holy Spirit, oh, the Holy Spirit makes indecision or, or the Holy Spirit modifies our prayers and changes our prayers and makes them comply with the will of God. You ought to read it in Romans chapter 8, 26 and 27. It makes modifications. It makes changes to our prayers so it complies with the will of God. Can I tell you something? One of the reasons why our prayers are not answered is because they don't comply with the will of God. God won't hear you if your prayers do not comply with the will of God. You remember when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. He said, I want you to pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done done Lord when you pray when you pray your prayer need to include thy will be done because if your your will does not comply with God will God will not hear oh yes thank you Holy Spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit, for intervening in my prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being an intercessor of my prayers. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is one more thing. Oh, before we leave today, some of us here today is bowed down in sorrow. 
Lord, come here today. Holy Spirit, come here today. Somebody that's listening to me today, uh, they are in deep depression. They are in deep sorrow. They're in the valley of sorrow. Come here, Holy Spirit. Jesus said these words to his disciples. He said, I I'm going to sin. I'm going to pray to the Father. And he is going to send you another comforter. I'm the comforter right now. I'm going to leave. I'm going to be crucified. But, but Jesus said, I, oh, I'm going to pray my father. And he is going to send you another comforter. He is going to send the Holy Spirit. And he is going to comfort you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come here, Holy Spirit, and comfort us. There's someone here today, my friend. There's someone that needs comfort in today. Can I tell you this? Oh God, God, and God the Holy Spirit, oh God is a God of comfort. If you're in the valley of depression today, if you're in the valley of sorrow today, there is, there is no one that can comfort you like God. Your mama can't comfort you like God. Your daddy can't comfort you like God. Brothers and sisters can't comfort you like God. The Bible said these words. First Corinthians, the second Corinthians chapter one, verse three. The Bible says that God is a God of all comfort. In other words, God is a great comforter. He can comfort you better than your mama comforts you. He can comfort you better than your daddy comforts you. He can comfort you better than the preacher comforts you. He's the God of all comfort. The Bible says he comforts us through all of our afflictions. Is there anybody here that's been in affliction? Is there anybody here that's been in sorrow? The Bible says that God will comfort us in all of our sorrow. And if you're in the valley of sorrow today, call on God. I believe, I believe there's someone here today down in the valley of sorrow. I can see the tears in your eyes. I can see the hurt in your heart. I can see and, 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 and you and I need to call upon God to comfort us today. Oh, yes. Lord, we need a word of comfort. Lord, 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 we need a word of comfort today. Someone here needs a word of comfort. Send us, Lord, a word of comfort today. Here it is, Gray. Weeping may endure for the night. But oh, joy, comfort comes in the morning. Those are words of comfort. Oh, joy, weeping may endure all night. And sometimes it seems that though weeping and crying is greater at night, it seems that though our pains intensifies at night. But the Bible says, and God sends us a comforting word. He says, weeping may endure for the night, but all oh, joy shall come in the morning. I don't know when the morning comes. I don't know when the morning is, but I know this. A joy will come in the morning. Those are words of comfort. And if you are in the valley of depression, if you are in the valley of sorrow today, there's another word of comfort. Jesus said these words to his disciples. Oh, they were in sorrow because Jesus was leaving them and, and he was going to be crucified. And Jesus said these words, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I, I go to a prepare a place for you. Oh, how comforting that is. Oh, how comforting that is. There is a place. There is a place. And Jesus, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. And receive you to myself. Oh, what comforting words that is. And lastly, the Bible says, Jesus has these comforting words. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Oh, Jesus said, blessed are you, or happy are you, if you are mourning, 
You shall be comforted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting me today.